So Turbo Fours are gonna be the way of the future. And this is a 2023 Dodge Hornet GT, and you guessed it, it has a four cylinder turbo. Now what's impressive about the Hornet is they're gonna be offering a plug-in hybrid. So that's going to be something that's going to be really good for people who do a lot of city driving. Now, here's what the EPA says. 29 on the highway, 21 in the city, 24 combined. Let's see if that is the case. Special shout out to Larry H. Miller, Sandy. They do have this available for sale if you would like to buy it. Let them know you saw the video. And let's go ahead and get down the road so we can see how it performs. So in order to start it up, the push button starts right here. very unique chime so this is a manually operated seat you can pump it up or pump it down the bolstering on the seats are amazing and let's see telescoping steering wheel oh yes there we go so this is definitely for big people I do have the seat all the way back and man they have some nice pedals down below too this is this is a nice package. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but this does slide for you short people. But let's go ahead and reset trip one and let's see what this thing can do on the highway. Now, I don't know why manufacturers have to be so brand new, but there is a trip uh, setting in the screen for your center stack and your trip age right here. So you just have to hold and reset. Let's go ahead and get down the road. There's a bump up here that I want to hit with you guys so you can see me. This is a little sporty, which means it's going to be a little stiff. So you have McPherson struts up front, independent front suspension. And they have something a little different out back. Love the brake feel. Oh man, it's so nice. So here we go. That's not too bad actually. Not too bad if you're not going too fast it's pretty good but we're gonna go ahead and get down the road i'm gonna show you guys the zero to 60 for this thing this thing is pretty quick and we're gonna find out how quick it is so this is the way of the future 268 horsepower which is pretty impressive and you ready for this 295 pound feet of torque you guys ready here we go MPGs. We did a little bit of city driving, like I said, and we're driving about 70 miles an hour. So I almost wonder if they went to a 19 inch wheel and gave it a little bit more sidewall, would it be a little bit quieter? Like these tires are actually kind of loud, and you can really hear the road noise more so from these, you know, a little bit thinner tires and having a 20 inch wheel doesn't help that either. But I mean, it does look good though. That's, that's the beauty of, you know, larger wheels and tires is you get that nice look, but you do sacrifice a little bit because the noise does increase. Now at 50, it's quiet. <laughs> so when we go back the opposite direction, I'll be able to get up to about 80 miles an hour, so we'll be able to check it. This thing corners really well. At higher speeds, especially when you're accelerating, you do notice a little bit of sway is almost like the sway bars are not tight enough and that would be something nice to have i would say now at this speed at 60 it feels nice uh, i'm not sure what gear i'm in but i'm at 2000 rpms at 60 miles an hour i'm actually in seventh gear okay eighth gear okay so that was so that's why it's not allowing me to go into ninth gear at 61 but let me get up to about 65 Oh, there it is. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just hanging out in seventh gear. That's weird. And that could be just a break-in, too. Yeah, the interior 
I would say that this is a nice size for this type of crossover. It's really sporty. And as I said in the last video, I love the shifter too. It's really nicely done. The steering wheel is not too thin. It's not too big probably for some people. It has that great sporty appearance with that perforated leather right there. And for the most part, this steering is really tight. So as soon as you turn it, like it is moving in that direction. That's a good thing. It's nicely weighted. It's not too heavy, but yeah, I think it's like just right. So we just got to the midpoint and here's where we are so far for MPG. And we've only driven 6.2 miles, but let me go ahead and pull out my decibel reader so we can see how loud the interior is. So about 64, 65, we get up to 65 miles an hour. Oh yeah, right there. Let's set the cruise. Okay. If you hit bumps, it's like 71, 72. 68, 69 by the window. And then out back is like 65. So this is about what I noticed like in some of the pickup trucks. And I won't say that's a bad thing, but this is definitely louder. Like these tires, like if I were to get to like 70 miles an hour, for example. This, I think the adaptive cruise control might be limiting my speed here. And it's because there's some cars up here. But let me go ahead and put my signal on. I'm gonna try to gradually get back up to speed again. Oh yeah, right there. So 70. Yeah, it, it does feel loud in here. It does. I do like how it shows you the speed limit inside the gates cluster for the road that you're on. And I just noticed too that there's no paddle shifters. That might be something that would be nice to have for something like this. Because this does feel sporty. And I'm actually kind of surprised it didn't give this those little paddle shifters up here. Here's some of your visibility out of the mirrors. I will say, this is not a big crossover, so visibility is not really a problem. Now out that back window, you can't really see, but check this out. If you go to my car, actually maybe that's not it. Let's go to controls. There it is. Watch this. Rear view camera. So if you can't see out the back, if you have like some adults sitting back there, you can use this to kind of check out behind you while you're driving. Man, the brakes feel so good. I'm really, really impressed by the overall performance. I think that Dodge, they've learned a lot within like the last decade. It's not about just straight line performance anymore. It's really about the overall package for them now. And I kind of can tell that they didn't just skimp through to try to make a new crossover SUV. They did something a little different here. And as I mentioned, the fit and finish, the brakes, everything about this thing feels pretty tight. The tires and wheels are loud, and I think that's what you can expect at these types of price points. And when you think about a $36,000 SUV, you're not gonna have the best sound deadening, you're not gonna have the best you know, overall quality. So I do like this overall. That's the only negative I can say right now is that it doesn't have a lot of the qualities that I like to have in a vehicle. But, you know, the seats are really comfortable. They have the bolstering, and I really do feel like I'm driving a sports SUV. And here is the final stop for fuel economy. So 24 and a half MPGs, we averaged 45 miles an hour. We drove about 14 miles at 18 minutes. I was impressed with the 23 Dodge Hornet, and the highs were, it handled really well. And I feel like the overall comfort was pretty good for something that's considered sporty. The only lows were it did have some road noise and I think that the tires being so thin is why that was happening. But MPG I would say is pretty decent because that was probably maybe 50-50 drive because I did drive a little bit in the city too. But apart from that 13.5 gallon tank means you can get about 330 miles on a tank. 
and here's some of the performance which is probably in line with some of the other competitors the only thing i think dodge needs to do is to make this thing reliable if they can have this thing get over 100,000 miles problem free I think that this would be a really good competitor against Toyota and Honda. So hope you guys liked the video. Be sure to share your thoughts down below and I'll see you guys soon.